Hey everyone, Lewis here with Shutterstock Tutorials and today we're going to have a look at how you can somewhat salvage overexposed footage. Now I say somewhat salvage because Unfortunately, once your camera exceeds the highest luminance values that it can correctly record, no amount of dynamic range, raw, log profiles, whatever your camera may have, is gonna bring that image back in in post-production. It is gone. So what we can look to do is apply a band-aid onto our footage with the various methods that we're gonna talk about today. So it's not gonna be a complete fix. You're never gonna get that image data back, but it's gonna lessen the blow uh, of having a pool of hot white somewhere in your composition. So first of all, we're gonna have a look at how we can fix that on an actor's face. You know, if it's a bright circumstance and you've maximized your luminance values, you may be in trouble if the sun moves into a better position and pulls more of that intensive line onto your actor, as there's nothing worse than having clipped skin values. In this shot, it's just too much and it can't be recovered. However, for this sequence, for a music video I made several years ago, I had foolishly exposed for the actor while he was in the shade instead of his end point, which was directly in line with the sun. And when he reaches his end mark, there's just an area on his cheek that is overexposed. It's not as bad as that first shot. However, I have lost a small bit of detail within his cheeks, as you can see in the scopes, as that white graph, as that solid line, sorry, represents an overexposed area. Now we can limit that by adding color to hide the damage. And you can do this with the following. So first you wanna bring the highlights down uh, around about 85 to 90 of the white value should be okay. And then you're gonna use the qualifier in the HSL window, isolate the blown out highlights and then drag the highlight color wheel to a hue that is equivalent to the color in the area next to the blown out highlights. Now, of course, depending on the surrounding colors, you may need to mask the actor with a power window. And likewise, it would be best to finesse the qualification with the HSL matte settings here. Uh, the blue radius may be enough just to get where you need to be. But looking at the before and after, we can see that the addition of the similar hue to the skin tones, a lot more pleasing than just having the hotspot as it is. So yeah, this is really only gonna uh, work best when there's just a small pool uh, that's overexposed on uh, the actor's face. If it's the entirety of the right side, say, uh, it's probably not gonna look that great. And uh, perhaps you might have to cut to a close up instead. Uh, but next we're gonna jump into After Effects and have a look at how we can fix an overexposed sky. Uh, I was filming with the GH4 several years ago in this shot. So the dynamic range wasn't great to begin with. Uh, it's a bright day, lots of contrast. And I just had to expose for the actor leaving the sky to blow out. Now we're going to replace the sky. However, this isn't a typical sky replacement where we are just changing over the clouds or giving it the appearance of a different time of day. We're adding the sky because there isn't one visible. So this technique does require you to have an entirely clipped sky with no visible blue or clouds. So before we start, you're obviously gonna need a photograph of the sky, which is just slightly larger in your composition and make sure that it has the same brightness values as the image, meaning in this circumstance, it would be a little bit silly to have an evening sky of golden hour. So create a new composition, bring in your video and photo file and make sure that the photo is beneath the video file. Now, because this is just a solid layer of white, we're gonna key it out like a green screen. Therefore, we're gonna to go to the effects panel and add the Luma key effect to the video file and change the key type to key out brighter. And we're going to increase the threshold until your image returns with the sky image below. This is something that will be different for every clip, but this value is perfect for my clip. So we're left with a thin white line around some of the edges in our image. Not great. However, uh, it's just a simple fix. So we're going to add the refine soft matte effect to the video layer. This may be enough for some people just adding this effect. However, in shots that include foliage and, uh, you know, like branches and grass, uh, you may need to play around with the settings to refine the effect and the settings you're going to want to mess around with is going to be the contrast, the shift edge and the decontamination amount. Likewise, uh, if necessary, you can jump back up to the Luma key effect and mess around with the edge feather setting. For this project, because this electric pylon was so clipped from the bright sky, I found it was just easier to remove from the composition for the live video. Shift rescued me used to say, do not worry about the war. It will not leave the cities. 
do not worry about the war. So this technique really works time. best uh, when there's not a lot going on in your frame. Perhaps one person moving throughout is fine, uh, but if you've got several different things or if the camera's moving itself, uh, it can start to get a little bit tricky. And if you know arriving at a location that you're more than likely going to have to blow up the sky to keep your actor uh, exposed, obviously make sure that they're not wearing white because it would hinder this technique. Next, we're going to have a look at fixing clip values in a light. Admittedly, this final technique falls more on the lines of creative application as it does alter uh, the generic look of the image and not just the highlights, but I find it works wonders when you happen to have a hot light. So what we're going to do is add haze around the light so it isn't as eye-catching and this somewhat mimics the effect of a promist filter. So we're going to lower the highlights back into legal values and then add a layer node. On the bottom node, we're going to add a Gaussian blur and increase the intensity quite dramatically. We're going to go to the layer mixer and change the composite type to screen. You'll then find that the entire image has a haze to it. Unless you are creating a 1920s period piece, this likely isn't the effect that you're going for. So on the node with the blur, jump over to the custom curves and lower the shadows and midtones region until you get to a place where the haze is only really situated around the highlights. On a separate node, you can then play around with the master wheel to find the base contrast for your image. If we look at the before and after, you can really see that it's dampened uh, that hotspot. And unlike the skin tutorial or the sky tutorial, we haven't really replaced the light here. We've just lessened the intensity of the hotspot and made it look more natural with the ascension into the light caused by the haze rather than it just being a bright area within the image. Okay, so there are a number of tips on how you can somewhat salvage overexposed footage. Of course, as noted for this entire tutorial, in most circumstances, it's just gonna be a lot better to redo the take. If that isn't possible, hopefully these tips will help you out. So I've been Lewis with Shutterstock Tutorials and I will catch you guys next time.